one way that you can visualize what we're going to be moving on to now um, concerning minimum spanning trees is to consider a situation where you might have a number of computers that you want to network and you want to keep it as low cost as possible so you want to make sure that the wiring for example um, you do it in the most affordable way okay so all of the computers if you will need to be connected in some fashion so they're all connected to each other but there are certain distances um, that can be taken and can be covered and is there a way of doing it in the most affordable fashion okay and this comes about the idea of a minimum spanning tree um, we've already had a look at the graph theory understanding of what a tree is um, if you remind yourself or if you remember rather uh, if you've got five point, uh, four points rather and let's say these are the connections that I currently have for those four points then a tree for this is a graph that connects it, connects the th four points, or rather this is a spanning tree, it is a tree that connects the four points but in the minimum way there are no cycles there, okay, so cycles, we can't have those in this, uh, in this section. Um, so this is a tree. Uh, we have arcs that connect the four, so you could travel from any arc to any other, uh, any vertex, sorry, to any other vertex. Okay, so there is a route through, so they are all connected, okay? And there are no cycles. And that is what a tree is. So a spanning tree may, really means that it encompasses all the vertices, okay? So it hasn't got, it's not two disconnected bits. The whole thing is connected. Okay, so it spans the entire graph. Okay, it spans the entire uh, number of vertices. And so if we're looking for a minimum one, we're looking at the most, uh, the cheapest way and the least expensive uh, that will connect the four points. Okay, so there are two algorithms that do this. The two algorithms are Kruskal's and Prim's. Okay, uh, the two that we are going to consider. The first of them that I'm going to consider is Kruskal's algorithm. Okay, and I'm going to apply it to this graph here. Okay, so let me just erase this bit. So I don't need that. Now, this is Kruskal's algorithm put into words. Um, obviously, if this was for a large uh, network, you would program a computer to do this. Um, so, first thing is first, and what Kruskal's algorithm asks you to do is to first list the arcs in ascending order of weight, so from the smallest to the largest. So, you've got to look at the graph that you've been given and write them down so that CD, for example, is the least, okay, at 3. And then we've got, I can see I've got ED and BF. They're both on four. It doesn't matter in which order you write them down. Okay, so I'm going to write them down like that. E, D, then B, F. It also doesn't matter which order I write the letters around. I could have written D, E here instead of E, D. That doesn't matter. Okay, so if you want to keep them in alphabetical order, you can. So that deals with the two fours. Then I've got two fives. I've got A, B, five. I've got a F at 5, uh, I've got two 6s, I've got A, E and F, E, and then I've got B, C at 7, and E, C at 9. Okay, so I have written them in order of weight. Notice how I am writing down the name of the edge, the label of the edge, or the arc, and the weight on each one. Okay, so make sure you have both.
Now, what I'm going to show you on the right hand side is how the minimum spanning tree is being built up. So I'm just going to do a copy of my uh, grid of the network here, but just the vertices. So you can see how the minimum spanning tree builds as we go. Right, so first of all, we pick the arc of least weight. So I'm going to pick CD, so I'm going to circle it, and CD is the first one that gets added to my minimum spanning tree. Okay? Then we're told to look at the next arc in the list. So we look at ED. If it forms a cycle, discard it and go on to the next arc. If it doesn't form a cycle, add it to the tree. So let's have a look at what ED will do. If I put ED in there, E to D, okay, that will not form a cycle, okay, because I can't really form a cycle here. Um, so ED will have to go in at four. So I circle ED, I've added it to my minimum spanning tree. Now I've got BF. So I keep repeating step three until all the vertices have been joined. So BF, that one create a cycle, so I'm going to add that in, BF, then I've got AB, that won't create a cycle either, so I'm going to have AB, then I've got AF, okay, now if I look at AF, that will definitely create a cycle, because I'll have a cycle ABFA, -A. okay, so that is one that I'm going to discard, so I draw a line through it, making sure it's clear that I've discarded it. And then I go to the next one, and I've got AE. Now that won't create a cycle. So AE is selected. And then I see that now I've done that, all of my vertices are now connected. They've all been joined up. Okay, I can get from any vertex to any other one, so this is a tree. So I no longer need the three remaining edges that are on my list, and they can all be discarded. Okay, so this is the, ne the necessary notation that you have, making it clear which ones you've picked and which ones you've discarded. We'll also want to work out what the total is, okay, of the minimum spanning tree. So, total of minimum spanning tree, which is often abbreviated to MST, is 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, so that's 7, 11, 16, 22. Okay, and that is the total of the minimum spanning tree. This is itself the minimum, a, a minimum spanning tree, okay, because there can be more, more than one way of doing it. Um, so we could have chosen AF instead of AB, for example, if you put them around the other way. So if you do, if you had done that, then you will have got a slightly different looking minimum spanning tree, but it would have been still 22. Okay, 22 is the minimum.